Hello YouTube! Flashlight Enthusiast here. Today I'd like to show you the new software in SC13, a small EDC flashlight and in my view the successor of the popular SC21 that I reviewed recently on my channel. It features a popular and great Nietzsche 519A, small form factor and high capacity battery in 18350 size. But is the upgrade really better than the previous model SC21? Well, let's find out. I got this flashlight directly from Sophie, so if you are interested in Sophie products, in particular SC13, make sure to check out the link below this video to their official website. SC13 comes in a standard plain software box with labeling what model, what LED, what CCT could you expect and with, the, with battery or without the battery labeling but other than that plain simple cardboard box and inside you will find a multi-language user manual with all your NCNIMA FL1 chart with different modes, lumens, ranges etc a one direction stylus steel pocket clip, actually quite long USB to USB-C charging cable and additional accessories like wrist lanyard and two spare o-rings in case you need a replacement. As usual everything is well labeled and protected in transportation so before playing with your new Sovereign SC13 make sure to unscrew the tail cap and remove the insulation film from the battery compartment unless you're ordering an ordinary version without the battery. So here is the Sophia and SC13 and frankly speaking this is a quite attractive little flashlight. It is very compact as in my tastes and uh, this matte anodization really gives this premium look. Although Sophia is obviously not a premium brand, however the products keep improving and getting better and better so I highly encourage you to check them out. Really good quality for the price especially. As you can see this uh, markings already from the pocket clip start to show. Obviously this is normal, you might apply some oil to uh, minimize this effect when you clip this uh, pocket clip to your flashlight, however this is uh, to be expected. As you can see it is quite ergonomic and it reminds me of this shape in the Emisar or Noctigon KR4 as you can see quite comfortable grip in this cigar scenario as you can see we've got this flat surface so tail standing is not an issue here good electronic switch with tactile feedback which is quite nice on the other side we've got USB-C charging port cover by this rubber cover this is quite highly mind you Tail cap is magnetic as you can see it can hold the flashlight quite well horizontally and vertically although the magnet is not that strong and unscrewing the tail cap will reveal a nice set of threads analyzed here so lockout is possible. Standard spring from Sofirn and down there we've got an included 1100 mAh 18350 battery so slightly higher capacity that you might expect in such flashlight it is good and down there there is a plain contact but as you can see no physical reverse polarity protection so you might use the flat top or button top batteries as well and if you are a lanyard user there is a lanyard attachment here however bear, bear in mind that it, it will disturb your tail standing functionality if you put it in this way and down there there is a single optic it is quite flat but the beam pattern is nice you've got a nice big hot spot and slight light uh, at the side so a slightly dim spill and in my view the optics are not covered by glass however you've got nice protruding flat bezel so it shouldn't be an issue here and down there there is a beloved Nietzsche 519A user interface is quite simple one click for on one click for off holding from off will go into straight into the moonlight mode holding a switch from on will cycle through three different modes low medium high low medium high etc double tap from off or on to go straight into the turbo mode one click will go back into the last used mode and double tap from turbo mode to go straight into the strobe mode and there is also your lockout mode triple click from off to lock out the flashlight two blinks will indicate that the flashlight is locked out one thing to mention is that during the lockout mode you can hold the switch to activate your moonlight mode which is quite handy software well thought obviously software also thought up about the battery indicator so once you turn on the flashlight there is green red and flashing red to help you understand your battery status 
Once you plug in your USB-C charging device, you will see the red indicator when the charging is in progress and green one when the charging has been finished. As you can see right on the screen, the charging is quite fast and will charge your battery in no time. Here are my lumen measurements of the Sovereign SC13. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. When it comes to the quick side-by-side -side comparison of the new model between the old model, as you can see they are quite similar, SC21 was slightly slimmer but longer and Sovereign SC13 is slightly bulkier but shorter. Both feature a stainless steel pocket clip that could be used as a headlamp with your hat. The main difference is that uh, Sovereign SC13 features a TIR optic instead of the reflector that was used on the older one, hence the shorter length of the flashlight, but also features a higher capacity battery in 18350 format compared to 16340 on the Sovereign SC31. Both feature a magnetic tail cap and are excellent build quality, however as you can see this is a change in analyzation matte finish of the newer Sovereign compared to more glossy uh, silky finish on the Sovereign SC31. Electronic switch on both of them, uh, in my view the newest is slightly more firm compared to more clicky on the older one and as you can see we've got also both flashlight featuring USB-C charging port comparison here, no major difference except for slightly slice difference but also the driver. Looking at the performance chart, you can clearly see that Sovereign did a step back compared to SC21. As you can see, we've got around 909 lumens at start, which is quite good for such a small flashlight, and we have it sustained from around 47 seconds before it steps down from around 863 lumens over the course of 30 seconds around 235 lumens. And as you can see, we've got standard linear output regulation, which is a little bit of shame. However, for such a price, you might expect that you've got beautiful beautiful beam from Nietzsche 519A and it steps down from around 235 lumens to around 119 lumens after 1 hour and 25 minutes before more aggressive step down towards moonlight. As you can see the flashlight won't hurt your hands, you've got 45 degrees Celsius after the step down and around 40 degrees Celsius stabilized over the course of whole run time. So does newer always mean better? In case of Sovereign SC13, not necessarily. Well, I have to admit that the build quality and finish is much improved compared to the Sovereign SC21 and the design is definitely way more attractive. We also got an optics and better LED compared to SC21, however, in case of performance, we've got definitely a downgrade. And if you are a flashlight enthusiast like me who pays attention to the driver and sustainable output, you will definitely be looking at the standard Sovereign SC21. With these limitations in mind, I still would recommend Sovereign SC13 for a general user who is looking for a small backup light with great design, long runtime, and easy to use user interface and beautiful Nietzsche 519A pattern under this Fresno lens. But for flashlight enthusiasts like myself who are looking for flat outward regulation, this is definitely not a model for you. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button to support the algorithm of this channel, hit the subscribe button not to miss any future videos that are released. If you have any comments or personal experience with this flashlight, leave them below this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.